we go. Hey guys, we have a fun episode for you today. Uh, before we get started, tell you about our friends at Geico. Maybe you own your home or you rent your home. Either way, it can be a lot of work. But you know what's easy? Bundling your policies with Geico. Geico makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. And that's a good thing because you have so much to do around the home already. So just go to geico.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's Geico easy. Visit geico.com today. That's geico.com. Woo! All right. <laughs> All right. So a little bit different episode of Shift and Steer today. We don't have Brad. Brad is fishing his boat out of Lake Havasu last night. Talked to him. Uh, I was wondering about that. Yeah, he, he went out there early. He was like, it's going to be great. I'm going to go out to Lake Havasu and I'm going to get my boat out of the trailer and I'm going to put it in the water and I'm going to fire it up and I'm going to sit in my boat and do the podcast the way Aaron sits in his car. And then this morning he's like, none of that's going to happen. <laughs> that's hilarious. So, so what did, did it sink? <laughs> no, I, I think, I think he kind of just like opened the garage of, of the uh, boat and uh, it was just covered in dust. And I don't know if the, I know the, the stuff I couldn't tell if it was a or, dirt floor in that in that warehouse yeah that's what it looked, looked like <laughs> i was <laughs> expecting was just, something a little different when he said it's, or it was it's just torn. so dirty after all those years the concrete had a layer of dirt on it oh yeah i guess it could have been that too yeah he sent us a photo and it was it, yeah it just looked like a, a, a like a like a steel shed with no bottom yeah yeah you know? exactly <laughs> um boy we, I don't know. way so to we, store a hundred thousand dollar boat brad <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Man, um, I, I'm Whoa. sure. I'm sure it's just. I'm. I'm sure it's just dirtier than he thought. It just needs to get washed <laughs> and and fixed up and and. Yeah. You um, know, critters got in it. Critters had to get in it. If it sits that long out in the middle of nowhere like that, they'll find a way in. They'll have babies. <laughs> and you'll have like just I'm surprised you didn't open the door and little things like in the movies we were bouncing around everywhere and jumping and everything. You know, but <laughs> but the floor was was pretty clean. It, yeah, it I was. mean it it could have just been a slab of cement and dusty. Like it's pretty it's it it, it looked pretty clean and like it wasn't like weeds yeah. or anything was coming yeah. up. So Surprising. maybe it is pretty I, pretty sealed. I, I just saw one little rattlesnake. Uh, S trail, you know, like a sidewinder and the whole yeah. <laughs> and Brad put that footprint. in there. Yeah, I didn't see any footprints in there or any garbage. I mean, like you said, it was immaculate. It was just, you know, lost in time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's going on over at your shop? I see you're sitting in the Morgan. Yeah, I'm sitting all bundled in the Morgan. up. I, yeah, all bundled it? up. It's actually cold. It's been. It was so cold and windy yesterday. I'm like. What the hell? It was like 70 degrees. I've got sunburn in like the weirdest places, like on the inside of my left knee, but the inside <laughs> of my right calf, because I was outside welding and just in the heat. And and then yesterday it was freezing. And then today it's cold too. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> Typical <laughs> Tahoe. But yeah, I'm sitting in my shop in the Morgan facing the other way. I took the opportunity on a nice day to pull everything out of the shop sweep vacuum sweep clean mop um dust and then and then i left i left one of the cars outside under car cover i pulled the guts of a lift i'm gonna put in at some point soon uh, i put those outside underneath one of the big trucks so i can make some room in here so i can work i have my mini cooper in my neighbor's garage i have my wife's jeep out front i have the other jeep here at the shop I'm, I mean, it's like everything's everywhere now that it's nice weather so I can have a little room in the shop to work. <laughs> you know, I, now that we have a video going along with our podcast, um, I, most people listen as a podcast. They're not necessarily right, watching right. the video, but uh, we should think about maybe you want to give us a little bit of a shop tour with your with your with your camera phone are you using your phone or are you using your laptop what absolutely. are you doing absolutely i have everything set up on on my uh on my ipad which is uh taped to my hood but um, yeah <laughs> okay. I, I i can easily i wasn't prepared it's a little dirty but yeah i can totally do that okay so, but you're going to have to really narrate this because for those at home that are just using 
uh, audio. You're gonna have to explain yes. what's going on. Exactly. <clears throat> so so we're gonna give a little a little tour of of the Rat Runner Garage, and uh, I don't know. I guess I I won't start outside because that's kind of weird. But uh, yeah. So this is. The Rat Runner Garage. So you're looking at a 1,200 square foot, a really small building built in the, I think the late 50s. And it was a metal and machine shop uh, for most of its life until I think about eight years ago or six years ago when uh, a gentleman bought it. And uh, he, he did some insulation work, upgraded the uh, electrical and the plumbing, and then uh, used it for storage for a little while. And then there was something in here called the Mighty Ducks, which were these amphibious trucks. I don't know if you've seen those big boat truck things, you know, uh, driving down Santa Monica Boulevard or something. I've seen them in LA. They moved to LA, but they were here and there was two of them. And, uh, and they, they lived in here for a while. And then I rented it about a little over three years ago. And uh, yeah, this is my little sanctuary. So I've got old motorcycles, old cars, and uh, it's just my little private place where I just kind of do my work and service these old relics, which need constant attention. I've been doing a lot of leather work, so I've got a table here with all my leather goods. And uh, yeah, snowblower, you know, everyone in town needs a snowblower. Right? It's, so, a, it's, game, it's a game changer. <laughs> 1,200 but, square uh, feet looks it is a little big. bigger it looks bigger than i thought uh 1200 square feet maybe it's just because you have so much stuff in there <laughs> yeah. it's amazing LED lights it's amazing 1200 feet can can have all of that stuff yeah i yeah. see that the led is yeah, good yeah. exposed yeah, yeah, yeah. ceiling I'm, is I'm cool gonna, i'm gonna convert because the ceiling isn't that high and that's part of the problem it's an old ceiling and there's really no room so that lift i have is is a very low stealing lift um but yeah, yeah i'm gonna put these led lights this is the 27 dodge this is october moon which uh you know has some really fun features like these these horns if if you watch the latest episode of mike brewer's world of cars where we come in here we explain this as dr susian i was just gonna say <laughs> it looks like something sort of dr seuss or willy wonka ish yeah. it's got all these crazy horns coming it, off it, of it's, it it's really fun but it's just a cool place you know fans come here from all over the world and uh, literally and uh you know i let them in appointment or no appointment where'd you go i can't hear you anymore oh i must have covered this microphone sorry i'm trying there you to go. Hold. <laughs> all right uh, fans come here from all over the world and uh and we give them a little tour and uh, take them out in a car or, or take them out in something or, or let them experience it. Uh, everything on this barnwood wall here has been left by a fan or a visitor. Everything, uh, oh. which is really cool. So it's kind of become this organic wall of, 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 of love, of, you know? <laughs> yeah, people and, and, and leave weird one, stuff. Yeah, and one thing um, that they didn't show on the Mike Brewer show, which I just realized, was Mike and Ant brought me this. Do you recognize that steering wheel, Matt? I don't know where that was from, but... Come on! Come uh, on! You've used that. You've driven with that steering wheel. Yeah. It's an Alfa Romeo! It is an Alfa Romeo, but the, uh, the, the, I don't know, the, the those pieces with the with the i guess the horn buttons that are on there are much different than it, it's early than yeah it's, it's yeah. Probably, if i recall it's a it's a 70s so this um was really cool so so mike brought a gift because it was his first time the rat runner garage and him and aunt signed it and it was really really sweet and uh very very heartfelt i'm i'm it's a shame it didn't make the it didn't make the episode because it was it was we were we were both very moved. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, but that's actually from Amp's show, Master Mechanic. Yes, where he donates uh, that Alfa Romeo to the uh, the build where he builds that amazing little indie car, which I just am so in love with. Uh, but yeah, so you know this place is full of relics, and everything in here has a story like that. Okay, but where's all the other stuff? You have the Pinscower, you have the Isettas, you have the Mini <laughs> Cooper, you have, 
uh, do we need to go stuff. outside? Do I don't, I, don't I mean, I don't know, but <laughs> I guess 1200 square feet's not enough. They're, they're on the other side of this door. <laughs> oh, all right. I, uh, it's, it's all right. Well, go ahead and open the door. Let's peek out there real quick while we're, while we're doing this. And again, you guys can uh, go to the website or YouTube and uh, shift yeah, yeah. com. You can scroll through some of this stuff quickly on the video. If you're listening to the podcast, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we so, won't dwell on this too much because we're just trying to show some stuff. So we're, yeah, we're there's the defender, defender you've been working on, which we love. Yeah. And there's the pins gower. There it Boy, is. Wait, screenshot that right there. Click. Yeah, hold on. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. That is awful pretty, isn't it? With the blue sky and the and, and the Tahoe trees and. <laughs> but yes, here here we have my mom's '53 Chevy truck. Yeah, which is been in the family for over 30 years it's seen better days uh, you know she's aging ungracefully uh, <laughs> here is a mini relic that i used uh, to donate parts for my 1960 uh, we have a 55 cab over right there that's a project there's a little porsche 914 under there that mike and i started on the show i've got to do some work on that yeah we'll Th this is a called a denper yep this is called a Denper, which is like a Ural. Um, I'm actually wearing a Ural shirt underneath this jacket. But um, a very unique vehicle. The Denpers are very rare. They're not worth much. They're kind of wonky and junky, but they're fun. Uh, here's the Isetis. We've got lots of work to do on those. We've got a 37 or 36, 37 Ario Speedwagon. I know, a Rio <laughs> Speedwagon, but, but we can't help but call it an Ario Speedwagon. But uh, yeah, so, you know. And then just, it's just stuff. <laughs> everything, everything sits out there when it snows because the weather looks nice now. But what oh, happens yeah. when actual weather comes in? I try not to let stuff sit outside when it snows, and I generally do a fair job of squeezing it in the shop. I put two or three motorcycles in the back of the pickup truck and squeeze it into the shop, and, and blah blah blah. But. Uh, yeah, the Isetas sat out this year. You know, they've been sitting out for 50 years. I figured one more season wasn't going to hurt. Yeah, it's not going to make a difference. Those uh, look like it's not going to make a difference. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we had a really light season this year. Uh, it, it really wasn't that bad, and I really can't complain that, uh, that there was much snow at all. So what was left outside really didn't see that much weather. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for the tour. You can. Uh, yeah, there's the little tour. Be sure to check the video, folks. The video content's kind of fun, and uh, yeah, you get a little tour of the shop here. Let me. I. Uh, my space getting back in the Morgan. <laughs> yeah, I went we back over to the. Uh, I went back over to uh, our shop over on the, on the weekend over at Adam Corolla's garage, and you know oh, we yeah, were talking did... before about uh, about oh, the. Yeah, yeah about the truck, about the lightning and, and getting axles made. It all came back to, you know, yeah. the, the VSS, the speed sensor that's on top of the housing, uh, it wasn't working well and it controls the shifting and it controls the ABS brakes and, uh, and the speedometer and nothing's accurate. The ABS light is on. And although we've changed the sensors, uh, you, can, you can change the sensor and then the sensor is just kind of like, it's basically like, it's plastic, but it's like a magnet and it has one bolt that holds it to the housing and you can take it out and you can file down like the mounting pad, like where it, the ring around, Oh sure. Where, yeah. you know, and there's, there's an O-ring on it, the magnet sticks in and uh, you can pop the O-ring off, you can file it down and that, that brings the magnet closer to the tone ring in the differential. And that's kind of a, a an easy cheat way of of trying to make it a little more accurate when it's when it's getting worn over time. So you take a new sensor, you file it down, you put it back in, throw the bolt in. That did help a lot, but it didn't fix the issue completely. So I need to do a tone ring. It's an exciter tone ring, and I, I have one laying around here. It's about is, is that know, what looks? It has little lines in it, so. so. It's just right. it's just a big open ring and uh, and it's got teeth on it. Um, hold You're on right, one second teeth. and I can grab it. Uh, oh. You guys sit tight for one second. <laughs> if we're running what this is, uh, this is a limited edition MV Augusta America, which is kind of cool. Okay, you're back. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm back, and you guys will see in the video. Ah, yes. Oh, so the teeth are on the outside instead yes. of the inside. I was I was thinking of an ABS ring. You know, an ABS ring has yeah. the, has has the teeth kind of on the inside. And it, and it's yeah. and it's not in because it goes where basically on the differential it goes where the where the ring and pinion gear is it's very big yeah. yes it is <laughs> it's not like uh it's not like at the end of the of the housings like at the you know where the abs ring would be let's say in i don't know maybe a more modern car so i have to replace that stupid thing which means the whole <laughs> differential has to come apart oh man um that we've talked about and i went down this uh exploratory Metal. avenue of of yeah <laughs> of should I do C-clip eliminators? And the consensus was they're great for drag racing. They're not good for the street or certainly any sort of uh, road course because they will leak. So, oh. so the solution is weld on new ends to the housing that lock the axles in place. And, uh, and that's what you got to do. Um, so since I had to replace the tone ring, I was like, I've, I have new gears. I have new 355 Ford racing gears in there already. I have an Eaton True Track differential in there already. I've got the big brake kit and stuff on it, but we never did the axles because there isn't an over the counter axle for that truck. Right. Yeah, for some reason, I don't know why. <clears throat> um, so I spoke to a couple of people and uh, went with Mark Williams. Uh, he makes a very, very good axle. Um, uh, an unnecessarily expensive uh, expense for me, I would think. But uh, in the world of three hundred dollar axles, these are much more than that. Um, so I had to take the truck and get it back up on some jack stands. I had to take the wheels off. Had to take the brake rotors off. Had to to get proper measurements of the housing and all that stuff. So I did all that this weekend or last weekend. Sent everything over to Mark Williams. They're custom making axles. And uh, they're sending uh, housing ends and uh, bearings installed and whatnot, and then everything will be sort of welded back together. Uh, well, man, uh, it's a can of worms, man. Yeah, yeah. It's All just, just to, it's to do just that tone ring. Ford lightning. It's yeah, yeah. Ford lightning. yeah. <laughs> I hear. Well, I think you. I think you're going to spend almost as much money as Ken Block did on his Fox body. Uh, which is right in your realm of uh, of love that that you, that must have got really exciting for you when you saw that. Huh? It, it is. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the Ken Block uh, <laughs> Huna Fox. Uh, thanks to <laughs> thanks to everybody who said that. Oh, by the way, in honor of Ken Block, here we go. Oh, there I you got, go. <laughs> I got the Hoonigan shirt on today. Uh, for his uh, Huna Fox uh, concept. They haven't built the car. They haven't even started building the Right, car. right, it's all concept. He builds yeah. it, debuts it, debuts it, but he wanted to do something a little differently. So he published a video, he put out a video and a, a bunch of images of a Fox body Mustang that's crazy over the top, like his, his Hoonigan Mustang is whatever, 65 Mustang that he did. We should look up the designer too, because that, that's a cool story. Yes. Uh, what was his name? Ash. Yeah, something uh, like that. Something like that. He's a he's a he's a Hollywood designer. Um, he's been tapped to do uh, some of the design or all of the design of the newest Batmobile, which I think is the Rob Pattinson movie. Uh, so he's he's doing kind right. of a Batmobile on that. Um, he's uh, he's done some uh, some pretty amazing designs, uh, not just cars, but a lot of cars. Um, cool stuff. Uh, here's my thoughts on on it. If you guys dig up the photos and see uh, what it is, I'm not sure uh, uh, if I can. Uh, I'm not sure how to put it up on the screen, but um, I'm looking it up too. I'm, <laughs> uh, but, I'm trying to. But the video is this great conversation with the designer and what they kind of did and. Um, Ken Block's influence was sort of Miami Vice TV show, 1980s. Uh, he was talking about how the white on white Lamborghini Countach uh, 
his memory was he, that screamed eighties to him. The white leather interior, the white Countach, and and, uh, oh, and flashbacks of Vice. oh yeah, total <laughs> and total uh, flashback of you know pink shirt, white 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 sport <laughs> coat, the whole Crockett theme, and so his recollection of eighties that he thought would be kind of fun would have a lot of those things. A uh, louvered rear window, um, which is funny because in in talking with the designer, who's clearly a, a young man, young talented uh, designer, a, a CGI artist, he was putting it together, and he's like, "Yeah, I put those things on the window you talked about." He's like, "The louvers?" He's like, "Yeah, the louvers." <laughs> I didn't even know what they're called. You know those Venetian blinds? Yeah, I know yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and I love that part of the, love love that part of the video when he's like I don't I don't even, I haven't right. even seen these before I don't even know what they do I don't know why they're there. <laughs> um, so I I have some Were, thoughts about weren't they on Kit too Night right? Riders uh, Kit did he yeah. have it he must oh. have uh, yeah. uh, the, the the designer was Ash Thorpe it says the name Ash. Dude or yeah Ash Thorpe right yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, uh, and I'm sure you, you'll look him up more, and you'll you'll dig into it. It's it's a fun little yeah, he's video. Yeah, done some cool stuff. Um, Real talented. They, kid. they did like a video podcast. It's about 20, 25 minutes long, something like that. But they edited it in a way that they, as they were talking about the car, the editors kept putting in images of the car and the different variations, more than the stuff that's been published on Instagram that Ken Block has put up there, because uh, Ash had his. Uh, interpretations of of the 80s style of car with the crazy graphics and polka dots and all the crazy you know like <laughs> kind of like you know like the pink like b brush stroke kind of line and uh, he's watching a lot of missing persons and howard jones videos yeah right? yeah so there's a lot <laughs> of that God, i gotta think about how many how many um like album covers had that that look back in the day you know something like yeah. that it's uh, very duran duran yeah it is it is so <laughs> His his interpretation of the Fox Buddy Mustang, the Huna Fox, is sort of the hair band kind of glam band totally. '80s version of it, and uh, 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 it's funny because all of my Fox Bodies were that I have because of the Cobra and some of the earlier models were were more '90s ish models. So they keep yeah. saying '80s, and I keep going, "Yeah, but it's kind of a '90s car." But I realize it's not really. It's '79 through '93, the Fox Body yeah. platform, um, and uh, uh, so I, I guess I guess it's much more of an '80s thing. Ken Block's interpretation of the car was was like the Countach. He wanted white on white. He even wanted white with like like gloss white with like with like satin white graphics for his sponsors which uh he admitted and said it's very unlikely all of the sponsors will allow him to do that because you're changing the look of their of their logo right. and nobody really likes you know th those brands they they contribute a lot they pay a lot they get you know they should keep their colors and stuff like that so i don't know if it's going to work but uh, well, what if he did color shifting vinyl where it was white, but when it got cold or hot with water, it would turn and change color. See, then, then he could possibly, <laughs> possibly. Uh, but if you ask the sponsors, they would say color shifting is fine. But whenever somebody looks at it or takes a photo, I want it in color. <laughs> and, uh, and he goes, only when you close your eyes, you, you, it's no longer in color. But when you're only looking at it, it would be in color. It needs to be painted with Lumilor so yeah. it can light up. Um, <laughs> so my thoughts on it are this, is uh, what they put together is right on point with the Hunicorn and his style and his graphics. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I love the engine with the ITBs and the big scoop, like the original Hunicorn yeah. before they put the turbos on it. Um, the, the flared fenders and, and all the cool stuff that they did on it, definitely really? on point with what they're trying to do. Not necessarily on point with me. <laughs> uh, um, <But> I, Matt, <laughs> you tell why. <laughs> I, 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 if you would have asked me what a Fox body Mustang, you know, Huna Fox would be, um, that's definitely something that I would envision. Um, so it's perfect for what they're doing. But the sort of, I don't know, just sort of the, 
the 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 flares and the I don't know for the lack of better term, but sort of the it's kind of JDM and it's kind of DTM race car where you get Definitely that a departure. You know, but you, you know, when you get yeah. the 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 flare, the front wheel flare. Mm-hmm. Let's say it starts at the front bumper low over the wheel well, and then in the back it cuts off like half, right? And then it doesn't go all the way down to the wheel well in the back. Like that sort of right. design. Um, I'm sure there's some aero components to it, but not necessarily the era of of that car. Um, but uh, so I would have done things probably a little differently, um, but I can see why he did it because it, it, it's on theme. It's it's on point for for the other projects that he's done. So it makes the most sense. He's yeah, taken it, that platform and turned it in to absolutely. a crazy late model drifter. Um, and it's fantastic. I'm a big fan of, of what he's done. The car is great. I absolutely love it for what he's for what he's doing with it. Um, and I love the fact that he's doing a Fox body Mustang because now of course you do. <laughs> somebody, somebody out there other than myself and a few others uh, are, 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 you know, raising the Fox body flag, if you will. And it's Ken Block and he's a good dude. And we've interviewed him a bunch of times and he's, you know, uh, we've done live stuff with them. We've done live shows. We've done car cast episodes. We, we went out and Adam filmed commercials with him. We all hung out in his trailer and he's, he's, he's fun. He's a good dude. And he's, he's a nut behind the wheel. I've been in the car with him several times. I've been oh, drifting wow. with him. That, that's gotta be cool. Um, I, uh, they set up like, like a drifting course, uh, at, in the big parking lot over at Dodger stadium. And uh, he invited me out to go for a ride with him in there, and uh, it was it was it was nuts, and it was fun. And he makes it seem easy. He makes it he makes that dance as well seem beautiful. Where you know we were, he was doing just some crazy drifting around like some barrels, and there's like a big trash can barrel in the middle, and he's like, "Oh, I'll drift around it," and he did it with. The barrel in the middle on his left and then he's like oh, i'll do the your side and i basically put my hand out the window and almost like ran my finger around the top of that barrel like <laughs> oh, you would man. like a glass when you're making that sound wow. and he's just nailing it just going around and as close as i can get the equipment that's what it sort of felt like was the drift version wow. of, of oh, the, 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 the precision is going, just going like this yeah. you know? <laughs> uh, and he's just like so how's your day been and i'm like it's good <laughs> it's up with you he's like just drifted um, so uh so lo- love ken block uh love what he's doing with that love the the attention he's gonna get to the fox yeah. bodies that are like right yeah. up there yeah. i mean See, that's the one i remember I, I, yeah. in high school 1988 senior year high school that was on my list of of the ultimate car and and my friend rick uh who actually has a morgan too he, he's what got me into him he um uh he had a an lx uh, mm-hmm. which which was kind of like the sleeper it was the lx yeah. but it had all the gt stuff on it so so you're yeah. driving around a little sleeper and then you stomp on that sucker and whoo that 5.0 launched but the, uh, yeah the, those were those were cool cars sorry the L- they are they 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 are they still. are <laughs> damn you aaron Jeez. well you know i hear that the gas monkey is uh, gonna jump on the band <laughs> Are they? <laughs> That's not true. I'm just getting your goat on that one. <laughs> Man. <laughs> <laughs> although, although, I, I, I got to give Richard and, and production and the guys a little bit of credit. They've got this, uh, oh, I don't even want to say what it is, but 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 they've, they've got an old IndyCar kind of uh, looking open wheel roadster that, that they just built. Uh, I keep seeing it online. That's pretty cool. It's it's definitely in the lines of stuff that I go. Now that's pretty cool. Actually, <laughs> now that you mention that, the the designer of the Huna Fox, Ash, he designed one of his own cars, which was like a crazy. I want to say you got to watch the video because he shows it. I want to say Corvette, like sixty, oh, yes. like seven, like split windowish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw with, that. That but, thing was a monster. Crazy fins and side pipes yeah. and canards <laughs> and stuff. Gorgeous. And uh, I'm not sure how it's working out, but something with probably the, the 
a Discovery Channel, but I think he said Gas Monkey Garage yeah. was going to try to build yeah, it. I think that they're in they're in the they're in the in the works that they're they're talking about it. So yeah, try to build yeah. something. It, yeah, very yeah. sort of George Barris ish kind of thing. It, well, it was along the lines of that too. It was yeah. very tuner and, and and yeah, it just has all that stuff on it, which is all the canards and it, it's so cool looking. I. I I'd love that look and it's like I'd love to kind of tackle it. I've seen it on some on some sleds and some rat rods too and it it, it it's like you can it's so outlandish that you can yeah. kind of apply it to anything. I'm seeing it on the new Aprilia motorcycle and the new Ducati it has those big canards and all this aero stuff and it, it's it's really interesting. I don't know. I, I I think I'm getting to that age group where it's like, ah, you can't do that. What's that old guy doing driving a? You know, you can't you can't drive an FRS at your age. You know. Yeah. Right. But, uh, um, <laughs> but uh, boy, I sure like the styling. They 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 sure look good like that. It, it is. It's the videos is worth checking out because it is sort of a. a, a it is sort of a design exercise as well when they yeah. start talking about yeah. some of the Definitely. nitpicking the things like what the tail is going to look like and with the, the fender flares do where do they tuck in under the bumper do they come out further and how do you bring the bumper line into the flares and and not really throw off the lines of the car too much like they they still right. want it to look like a fox body but they really wanted to do it, 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 that very it, kind it of dtm flare yeah yeah, I think they did a nice job of keeping the roots. Those yeah. that know Fox body lines know it's a Fox body and recognize it, but they've done a brilliant job of, of exercising all the new modern cues of design and, and, and arrow and stuff in it. It's a nice compliment. The question for you hardcore Fox body Mustang guys would be, look at the sketches and then tell me, do you think all of the sketches have the GT tail lights it has the louvered tail lights of oh, the gt that's right, um, yeah. and and a lot of people sort of swap those out to the lx lights and the 93 yep. cobras which is similar to a gt body kit uh didn't have the louvered tail lights would yeah. do you think they do, do you think the louvered tail lights the gt tail lights on the huna fox is is good or would you have gone with the LX or Cobra taillights for your for your for your Fox body guys. You guys tell That's me what's an interesting what to, argument. Yeah. Well, well, I, I, if, if, if now if, they put if they the put louvers the on the window. glass. Yeah. Yeah. So if they're they trying to that, match you gotta, it. You got to carry the thing. Yeah. You got to carry yeah. the thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All and, right. Uh, are they are they going to put the louvered covers over the fog lights too? You know. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there is fog lights on this one anymore. It's it's kind of done. So. Um, <laughs> is he going to wear louvers on his visor? You know, I mean, we don't know. <laughs> that would be fantastic. That would be fantastic. He uh, might go full retro, man. <laughs> shoulder pads. Oh no, they already have shoulder pads to be pulled out of the vehicle. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they got, they, they got, they got, they're all, they're all set. Um, they got the I'm, lifts. Yeah. I, I'm curious to see more about the power plant. Is it going to be? Uh, something more modern, or is it going to be? I don't know, a 302 based engine or 351 a, based a, engine with ITBs? Eco boost, you know? <laughs> well, I don't think so. <laughs> the one thing Ken Block said was uh, that the Hunicorn Mustang, um, it was naturally aspirated with the ITBs. I think I've right. got photos of it. It, it. it 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 came. I was invited to a to a small event out in LA when it when it debuted. And it had that configuration on it. And then they went to the turbos. And he said that the turbo's crazy power, but very different to drive. And he liked the oh, naturally sure. aspirated kind of V8 version to drive of it. So I, I would imagine that he's going to have to come up with something of, you know, very high compression, naturally aspirated, very high compression, race gas, uh, something i don't know sort of nascar engine type platform maybe with the nascar heads and stuff on it because i imagine he wants to get somewhere into that 800 horsepower range naturally aspirated to be able to do what he wants yeah. to do with this car yeah, the big question sure. is going to be do they mimic the drive line line out of the hunicorn and put it into the fox meaning all-wheel drive 
and, and whatnot? Or do they go back to a rear wheel drive version of this, which, uh, would be, which would be interesting. But if you think about it, I think his, um, uh, the, the, the rally cars that he, that he drives and drifts around are all wheel drive. The unicorns all wheel drive. Um, that, uh, that may be what he's evolved to with these builds. Is yeah. Going and he's, and it was cool to see the unicorn debut with the chains and it does the four wheel yeah. burnout on it. And, uh, uh, and whatnot, um, see there. what he wants to do. And yeah, there's some <laughs> foreshadowing to, does this car get built? How does he do it? And this could be the next Jim Connor. A video yeah. which uh, well, hello <laughs> which I which would love to see. Well, he's not going to build it, and not do anything with it. So yeah, if he exactly. does build it, I'm it's sure it's going to be hang it from my an epic video so. for it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a kitty uh, ride. <laughs> yeah, but uh, anyway, so I think we're just uh, knocking on the door of about 40 minutes with this uh, with this show, and I think oh. the way we have the Zoom set up, they kind of cut us off at 40 minutes. I don't see a timer on here. And Brad's usually the one that sets this up, and I don't see it. I but, don't either. Uh, hey, uh, but, do we have a second to to discuss Adam's uh, new garage? I, I forgot about that. I, I haven't. I've only seen a couple pictures you posted. How's that coming? Is it all dialed yeah, in? Or? It, it's it's not done. Um, it is coming along. There's the you know lots of permits being pulled and inspectors coming by and blah blah blah. It's and, oh, in California. It's a mess, and I'll yeah. let. <laughs> I'll let Adam get into all that because that oh, uh, that boils his blood for sure. But um, uh, he picked up a place that uh, is 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 this gorgeous building, almost looks like a firehouse of two front yeah. giant uh, uh, roll up doors. Beautiful. Um, uh, and it's got some offices uh, built in, and then there's a mezzanine that we construct it's about a 1600 square foot mezzanine that will have sort of this man cave up in the top a screening room and lounge area and all kinds of cool stuff underneath will be underneath the mezzanine which is a little bit higher ceilings than i thought it's got to be eight or maybe almost 10 feet um and that will be sort of a work area for cars or more not not the really messy fabrication more like race prep and and some things like that uh and then the rest of it which is 20 foot plus ceilings will all be open and uh and it'll be a car museum and uh so we i've got some samples from the epoxy flooring that we have um we're looking at some some ideas for that right now i just got those in the mail um, I just uh, uh, made the deal with the company that's building the staircase and the railing. The entire railing up in the mezzanine is going to be glass, just very minimalistic. Glass with just stainless steel stanchions, like oh. two spikes holding up the piece of glass. And wow. it will have a top, like a stainless steel top piece, a uh, handle sure. on it. And then the stairs will be a 90 degree, not a full switchback. So they'll come down one and then turn and then come out. Um, the stairs are a floating staircase. So it has a single I-beam in the back that's black yeah. that you'll hardly notice. It'll have wood uh, stairs on it. The sides will be glass um, with a stainless railing. But the way the glass attaches to the wood steps is the glass has like two holes like drilled out. Um, but uh, some of the high end houses and some places you'd see that there's two like, like brushed pins that hold that in. So when you see the glass, you see like two pins, two pin, two pins. We didn't do that. It has the pins, but then there's another piece of the same piece of wood that the steps are made that attaches to the end. So it looks like the glass is floating wow. and the steps go through the glass. Um, so what you're saying is no patina. <laughs> uh, no but 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 the wood there's oh, it, it's not gonna amazing. have that um ultra but the, modern but the wood is gonna be like like a white oak um uh with with uh, with kind of a satin finish on it and, oh, um, sure. uh, Boy, that's gonna be cool it's wow. it's it's nice we've got some renderings of the stairs and stuff like that and uh and whatnot so that's kind of the next step so it takes two to three months to build the uh, the staircase. It's it's basically built remotely prefab, and then right. it's sent to us in pieces, and we get a crew to put it together. Um, the only reason why- And directed. Yes, then basically. Directed. Uh, uh, well. The reason why I say two to three months is because of COVID-19 and yeah. the shop that's building it. They're saying, well, right now, our woodworking facility is open, 
or the, the steel is open, the glass is open, the woodworking was shut down uh, for two weeks because if somebody just comes in just with a sneeze, not with anything other than just a, a cough or a sneeze. Allergies, right? Right, <laughs> literally if they came in, like they're like an Indiana or something. If somebody comes yeah. in with allergies, they have to shut down that whole department and minimum 14 day quarantine yeah. for that department. Jeez. So right now they're up and running, but if somebody else walks in with with a sneeze or a cough or like you said allergies they've got to shut that down so the guy's like please be patient with us we well, think we're up and running we can't say for sure we're doing every measure we can and and these companies they work with their local government on um you know do they qualify as essential and they did because they're in manufacturing and then they're all the protocols that are in place that they've been sort of been given saying how many people can work there and what they have to wear and all this stuff. So, um, yeah, you have uh, to have it should be getting right. done. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 it, I think it's getting done and we'll see how, uh, how it all. Right. Well, all I can't wait out. to see it in person. So hopefully and, uh, we'll uh, get that. it's going to be, it's going to be cool. It's going to be, it's going to be a cool spot, but we're still going to keep the other shop that we have. Um, because it's, uh, it, moving some of the nice cars out gives us some more room to, to work on the messy stuff. And right now it's stacked up in there. It's a lot like what you've got going on in your shop, but there's just, but, but just, just race cars with engines pulled out and pieces kind of everywhere. And there's cars on rotisseries and guys are welding and, and, uh, they're going to continue to do that in, in there, but it'll be nice to, to free up some space. Um, and, and have a new location where people can visit and take the tours and, and, and shoot some videos and stuff like that. So it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. Nice. Do you have any projection date for when it's going to be ready? Um, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like three months, uh, I oh, think wow. over the summer. Uh, yeah. Um, the mezzanine's done. Everything's pretty much done. Uh, oh. the staircase needs to, to be built. The floors get done, but the floors can get done while the stairs and railings are all being built. Um, that process is about a week. What it, a crew comes in and they, they, they sand and prep the floors. That's basically an entire day. Um, patch the, the, any little cracks. Um, that's a day. Then they come in and do the first coat and it takes an entire day to do the coat. They'll come back the second day and do like a metallic coat over the base color. And then the third day they'll come in and do a top coat, whether we want to do a glossy or a satin finish, we'll, we're figuring it out. Glossy looks good. Satin finish hides the footprints and, the, and whatnot. Right. So, yeah, because um, it's hard to clean, man, especially yeah. something that size. <laughs> um, and then, uh, a lot of and, <laughs> and then it's about 24 hours before you can go in and walk on it. Um, and yeah. it's a good 48, you know, you know, a couple days, we want to let it sit over the weekend, basically, uh, before you can start putting weight on it. But he said the, this, the epoxy flooring and stuff, once it's done, this very, very high-end industrial stuff, I said, hey, I don't want to just roll cars on it. I need to bring the forklift in there with, you know, with like yeah. the very hard kind of strap of rubber for a wheel. And the guy's like, it'll be bulletproof. He goes, so if they start on a Monday, that following Monday, you'll be able to ride get the forklift in there because those stairs and everything with that I-beam, we need the forklift. We need to put all the glass panels up on the top and, and all that. By the way, that mezzanine it has a giant uh, rectangle, like two by four um, glossy white tiles that are being put up there. So um, all of the lighting is from big ass fans and we have fans oh, yeah. from big ass <laughs> fans. And what's great so is, is, they're, they're LED light bars, but everything in there is dimmable. So you can really can kind of control the light. So it's yeah. funny because when we walk into the shop now and you don't want to put all the lights on, you have to hit the switches and turn some of them on and some of them off, right? So you go like, oh, we don't need all the lights. But we, what happens is, is half the shop is lit and the other half yeah. isn't. So yeah, there's now, no transition. It's just like, yeah, light yeah. or dark. <laughs> so now you can go in there and we have multiple switches, but we have dimmers on everything and all of their LEDs are dimmable. Oh, that's so, cool. So you can say, hey, I want to light the whole place up, but I don't want it too bright and I don't want to burn through an electricity bill. 
now you can dim everything down to 20% and give it a really beautiful kind of museum look if you want. Very uh, cool. Or if you, you know, are getting into the fringe or looking for the TV remote or something like that, you can turn up the dimmers in that area and stuff. So we, we put a lot of thought into the lighting, into the air circulation and, and uh, all kinds of stuff. The mezzanine has three smaller fans from big S fans. The museum area has giant, like the 14 foot or 12 foot fans and all the calculations were done. So a fan throws a cone of air down. It, it doesn't put air out to the sides. It starts at the top and does a cone. So if you do a 12 foot giant fan and it's 20 feet up in the air, it'll spread as much as a 50 foot cone by the time it hits wow. the ground where the cars are. So two big fans yeah. are enough to blow air over 4,000 square feet basically down there in that area. Um, and, and, so it, and you want to blow air down rather than pull air up? And so yeah, like this, this is just as you're walking through the museum, it, 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 it keeps it a little bit, it keeps it, it'll keep it a little bit, a little bit cooler. Now the place has, I think, AC and stuff in it, especially in the offices and whatnot, but um, it's got radiant barrier all up on the top and it's high enough. Honestly, we've been been going in there for, for months and months. And although many of it was winter months, only now we've had a couple of hot days. It was about 90, 95. You feel the difference when you're up on the mezzanine. Sure, um, sure. Uh, rises, which, yeah. now, you're, and now you're much closer to the ceiling. So up there has three uh, what they call haiku fans from Big S Fans. It's kind of like a home fan, but it's industrial grade. It looks gorgeous like you'd put it in your living room or something but it's but the motors are super powerful and it's industrial and it's got like eight different speeds and everything ties into a nest system if you wanted to oh yeah um oh, awesome. now and also <laughs> when you so you can you can literally tell like your your google chrome or alexa or something to yeah. to do something like that but when you do the giant fans okay uh, big ass fans has to have somebody come in and install them because if you think about it, you have your fire system that's up there. And the way those giant fans are made to work is if something triggers the fire system and the sprinklers go off, those oh. fans tie into that system and automatically shut down. Yeah, cancel out. Oh, yeah. smart. Yeah. Really? So uh, and if you think about uh, in the. So involved. In the, just for so the fans. involved. Just for the fans. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just for the fans. Oh, don't get me wrong. It's 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 I don't know, fifty Man. or sixty thousand dollars of fans and lighting. It's oh it's a God. full on fifty something thousand, almost. But 60, you're building 000. the dream museum, the dream garage. That's so yeah. Cool. Adam walked in. He's like, you know, in his mind, sort of a he wants a world class museum, a world class space. Right. And in the world of sort of private, you know, rich guy garages, uh, what, you know, what did he want? And then, you know, there's a lot of things he's like, how about this? And how about this? And uh, myself and Sean, our fabricator, were like, you said world class, buddy. I was like, yeah, no cutting corners here. <laughs> no you know, skimping. No, no, uh, no, no. So now we need $30,000 worth of glass and $30,000 <laughs> worth of stairs. And, and he's like, this stuff's really expensive. It was like, you said, said world I class. didn't say spare no expense. <laughs> yeah, you said world class. Um, uh, anyway, I think that's it. I think, uh, I think we're good. Right. I think we're going to wrap up here. Honestly, at this point, right. I don't know if we're still recording or not, but uh, I think we are. So hopefully we got a good. full show out of this. Um, good <laughs> luck to, uh, to, to Bradley. And yes. hopefully uh, he's getting his boat loaded up and he may Bradley stop Bradley underscore and Benta. Yeah. He, he, may, he may stop <laughs> over at your place and drop the boat off. Hey, come on. As long as there's no worms in the, in the drive, he's good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it should be good. Um, right on, buddy. Anything else before right. we wrap it up? No, it's good to see your face and talk to you. I missed you guys. Oh, yeah. We'll miss you too. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <I guess>. uh, <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning right. in. And like we said, if you're listening to the podcast, uh, cruise on over to the website, uh, shiftandsteer.com. You don't have to watch the whole video, but, but definitely just uh, get to the, uh, to the little tour of Aaron's shop and see what the hell he's been talking about for all these years. <laughs> get the visual. <laughs> yeah, get the visual. Uh, thanks, guys. We'll see you later. All right, cheers.